Today on Campaign Terrain, I, your host, that guy Cross, I'm going to turn this rope into this flock and then into this type of terrain grass. So let's jump right into it. Thanks for coming to Campaign Terrain. I'll see you right after the bump. I promise to show you how to turn this and this into this and then this using this and this. But first, we're going to talk injury. The first hour I was doing this, I was using the scissors like this. And I got blisters in all of these locations. After that first hour, what I've started to do is I put a piece of paper, just a little bit of tape on it, to protect this part inside of my thumb, move my finger out of the way, and get deep into the scissors in order to cut what I need to. Because this is going to involve a lot of pressure right in that little portion of the, uh, the craw of the scissors. So I suggest having your hand way in here so you don't get the blisters and have something to protect your thumb. Wear a glove, put a, put a band-aid on something and uh, that way you'll be able to cut down in there without blistering yourself up as much. So this one is simple, but it's not easy and it can be painful and let's not do that. Okay, let's talk supplies. You're gonna need some type of natural fiber rope. I'm using a hemp rope, but you can use sisal, which is a little rough. I would not necessarily recommend that, but you can use jute, whichever you want, something with a natural fiber. You're gonna need uh, some paint. I use my regular boom for this. It's already half paint and half glue, so you're gonna need that. You're also gonna need some glue if you don't use paint, so just your regular 50-50 white glue and water or uh, mix the glue and the paint and then add some water. You are gonna want it watered down a little. I suggest that you have either a mixing bowl to mix it in and something to stir it with like a stir stick or if you have one that you're willing to use for this sort of project, a coffee grinder. This is what I used for it and uh, it'll come in useful both for mixing in the paint and for after the paint has dried, the little tufts are rock hard and this helps to grind them up apart to, again to get them back to this level but with the color in them. So I recommend a coffee grinder but you can do all of that with hand by hand. Um, pair of really good scissors. You don't want some some chintzy kind of scissors like I've got these which are really good and then I've got some really crummy ones that every time I try to cut them the blades try to spread apart on me and that is not going to work for you. You need something that's really sturdy and going to work together right here in the craw of this cutter. Okay next like I said you're going to want something to protect your thumb. Mine is just a napkin with some tape on it. You could, if you've got uh, one of those uh, leather sewing thimbles, you could try putting that on your thumb. You could wear a pair of gloves. You could just put a Band-Aid on it. All of it's going to rub right here on the inside of this. So that's where you're trying to protect is that little spot right there. And last, this puts out a lot of dust and fibers. You are definitely going to wear, wear your breather. Uh, it doesn't have to be one like this, but something to stop all of the fibers and the dust. Getting, you don't want to breathe those in. That's going to have you coughing and choking for days and are not good for you at all. So, breather. Preferably, there's some place where you're either outside or you can sweep up easily because you're going to have fibers everywhere. And really good scissors, something to protect your thumb. Coffee grinder, rope, paint, some containers to put your stuff in. And that should be all you're going to need for this one. All right, I'm going to be right back and start to show you how to cut. Okay, I've been keeping all my supplies for this in this box. It's a good size for this, and it has a second benefit I'll show you in a second. So take this out, move that off to the side for now. You're going to take a length of this off. What I've been doing is keeping one knot. I'll pull out a loop and cut it at that, so I end up with a strip that's about twice as long. I've already been cutting on this one. And then I'll cut that, and then I'll go to the next one and go to the next one. So then I take my little safety piece, put it on my thumb, I take the lid and use it to catch the fibers. And here's how I've been using the scissors. 
A deep in there like that. And then all you have to do, this part's the simple part, it just gets everywhere, it's just messy. Take this, uh, take the gap of your scissors here, and just decide on how long you want the fibers. You could you make entire plant fibers with this if you're going for um, like jungle terrain or halfway half of that if you're going for like hay on a farmstead and you didn't need it as short or you can go for like really really short pieces like this but I've been going about the width of this blade. I just slide the scissors until I can just start to see this, the rope on this side and I cut off like this. Now Every time you do this, it's going to try to cut at an angle and leave a little bit here at the back. I'm not going for perfect every blade of this dead grass to look the same every time. So what I do is move it in a little the next time, cut again, and about every third or fourth time, I end up with this little overhang right here. I don't know if you can see that, but that little piece is a little bit longer. And then I just take that and sort of nip that off and start over again. And three or four hours later a couple of good movies in and you'll end up with about half of this box full this took me two nights of about two to three hours each just constantly cut 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 this is not the quickest thing I'm showing you a way to do it if you don't want to buy uh, pre-made grasses so that's the easy part is the cutting it's not easy because you'll get the blisters and it's rough on your hands you'll get some cramps but it's the straightforward simple part after that I take all of these pieces that I've saved that I've cut and just dump them in my one box put them off to the side put all my other gear in there and then I'm ready to move to the next step next step is pretty straightforward you're going to want to take your natural fiber and add it to a bowl of paint so that you can then mix it in so you can get the color on it. And we're going to take it and spread it out on a tray to dry. You can use anything. It can be one of these old food containers. It can be a uh, baking sheet, a uh, piece of wax paper, whatever you want to make with that. Now, this last batch, I made this, and this yellow came out brighter than I expected. You always hear, oh, the paint's going to dry darker than you expect. Yeah, not so much. So I like this, but I don't love this. So what I'm going to do is make some a little darker. I'm going to use the same bright yellow I used, but I'm also going to add a little bit of brown. Now, this is my brown boom, which means it's already got some glue in it. And you definitely want the glue. It helps the color to really stick in, stick to and into the fibers. And um, I like to mix the paint first. That way it's good and I don't have to try to, I, I don't end up with striations in the grasses, which actually wouldn't be a bad thing, except for the PVA parts might keep the paint parts out of parts of the grasses. So um, this ratio is about half paint, half PVA glue, just your regular plain old white glue, and um, uh, then a little bit of water to thin it down. Now. This brown already has glue in it, so I'm going to do a little bit of the yellow. That's probably just about right for once. I intend to way over paint. And then I want to put about the same amount of PVA in there. Okay, and then like I said, I want this a little bit darker, so I'm going to take my brown and add just a little. And the reason I'm adding brown and not like black or something is black and yellow turns into a green and I'm not really looking for another type of green. So I'm going to mix these together. I'm just using this wire rod. You can use anything you want to mix it. I just find this wire rod works because I can sometimes use it like a blender and do like this with it. So get your color mixed up. Yeah, that's going to be a lot better. That's already starting off as dark as the other one is dried. Okay, so got the paint going on there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this off here. And then you always want to paint water ready to rinse your tools off with. I'm just going to scrape that in there. Now you can wear gloves for this, obviously, if you want to. But eh, a little messy is not a problem. It's, it's the acrylic. It washes right off in just a minute. Though I do tend to keep a wet or damp rag around with me. And I can just wipe that off. So whatever you want to do to keep yourself clean. Now, all these people paint on their mats. Ugh, drives me nuts. So I'm using a piece of cardboard to catch the paint um, just in case. All right, now I've got this set. I'm, like I said, I'm going for just a sort of generic 
yellowish grass. This already has a little bit of yellow in the paint water, so I'm not too worried about it. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the paint of, of water. Of, and now it could be plain clear water. doesn't have to be distilled or anything like that. And you notice it's going to make this paint a little stringy. So you want to mix this for a minute. Make sure that this is all mixed in. And once you have a consistency, consistency well, easy for me to say. You know what I'm trying to say. Once it's at a thickness that you like, you can go ahead and add some grass to it. So I'm just going to take some of the... I don't want to paint what's in there, so let me get my hand a little bit cleaner. I'm going to take some of that. Add a little bit in there. And mix it into the paint. You want to get pretty good coverage on this. You want to try to get it really saturated through all that. You want this to have the color all the way through. It looks like I really did get just about the right amount of paint for once. Okay, that's a little slobby. So we're going to take just another pinch more, toss that in there, fold it in with the others that have already painted. Now the reason, I suppose you could, but the reason that you can't really put this straight onto your um, board is that it clumps up like this and uh, these little clumps take a while to dry out and they don't really want to come apart until they're dried. So all I'm going to do is take that, toss it on my sheet here. I feel like I'm making tuna fish here. Okay, spread that out a little so it can dry. I've got a fan over there I put on. And I got a little bit too much paint on this, but that's fine. It's just my drying rack anyway. All right. And I'm going to go sit that off to dry. I'll be right back, and I've got a little short snippet where I show you what these look like already dry before I grind them up. Okay, on the wiggly cam, just to show you what this stuff looks like after it's been painted and then dried. So, it looks like little bristly burrs. A little bit spiky. Alright, I'm going to put that in the... Uh, grinder in just a second show you what it looks like after it's been ground back up through the magic of the interwebs I have gone and it cleaned my paint water my stick and my bowl and I have placed that that brown yellow over there to dry I'm gonna let that dry overnight and then come back and film again and I will show you me grinding that up both with a coffee grinder and by hand and then we'll have the green the brighter yellow the browner yellow and i've got a mix of these two colors here that i was going to use as a just a generic turf but like i said that yellow is a little bright so i'm going to have to try to figure out if i want to use that but i'm going to wait for that to dry and tomorrow i'll be back to paint three of these colors onto these three blocks just so you can see what it ends up looking like so join me for that be back for me tomorrow for you just a second all right, here's that yellow brown, brown yellow, however you want to word it, all dried out. As you can hear, it's all crunchy, crispy, and it comes out like this. It's really rugged. I was going to try to break some of this up by hand, but I'm, um, you know, not, because that's going to be a pain. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it in my coffee grinder. If you don't have a coffee grinder and you want to grind this up, I really don't know what to tell you. The last batch was not this tough. I think I got a lot more PVA in this one. So little less glue and it'll probably be easier to break up for you but I still recommend one of these they're nine or eleven bucks something like that at Walmart and uh, this one has a cup where you can dump stuff out put it back in so they're pretty easy to use now I'm gonna go ahead and take all this off and I'm gonna grind it up in that cup this is a small amount so it should all fit in there at once now this is gonna involve a little bit of shaking and finagling and wiggling it around while it's grinding to make sure that all of the uh, chunks get stuck down in the into the blade and come apart so I'm gonna do that here I'm gonna speed up the video but you'll be able to see what I'm doing I'm gonna go ahead and play some music for you over here so get your jam on while I'm doing this and uh, you'll see in just a second
Okay, there we go. That's ground up pretty well. It's back to little fibers. It's back to where you can scatter it around. Take that and find myself a container for it in just a second. But first I'm gonna go ahead and clean all of it out of my machine here. And uh, I'm liking that color a lot better than the bright yellow. So let me get a chance to get this all cleaned up, get this into a container, and then I'll be back to show you my application process. There's the four colors done and ready. As you can see, this brown yellow is noticeably darker than the bright yellow. The bright yellow, like I said, would look okay, but not anything like natural. This darker yellow, I quite like uh, the browner yellow. And you could even mix any of these with the natural color. And then I've got the green that I did originally, which is just my normal green boom color, which is, I think, a Kelly green. I'm not sure. And... Uh, mixed with the brighter yellow I've got this mixed color here <clears throat> so that's it for the colors now let's get into uh, using them to make uh, to cover some terrain so you can see what that looks like I'm gonna use my brown boom I'm gonna use this both as my ground cover and as the glue to hold these down I'm gonna do it in one step uh, this already has 50% PVA give or take so this should be adequate to hold all of these down I've got my uh, paint PVA mixture got a damp rag just in case I need it got a brush probably gonna use that um, I say probably I'm definitely gonna use that I've got clean water here rinse the brush out with not using the green boom for this but you could you could put a green undercoat if you wanted especially for something like jungles or something like that where you really wanted it verdant okay and then I've got four platforms here I don't know if you can see that but you can these were textured in a previous video so they've got a little bit of texturing on them but for demo purposes I'm not sure that's really gonna matter and then I've got a tiny whisk or excuse me I'm sorry uh, strainer for putting the flock on because you can either use it like this and, and dump it that way you can take it and run it like this so the flock will come out or you can just sprinkle it by hand and I'm gonna do a little bit of each and uh, try to get to that and show you exactly what I'm talking about with that so let's get on to that Start with a slightly damp brush. Don't really need it wet, wet, but helps the paint to flow. No idea why I'm doing this anti-clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever. But that's the order I painted it, so that's the order I'm going to smear it around. Let's just keep with with the pattern here. This doesn't really need a texture to it. Or, uh, you don't need to worry about brush strokes. This is all going to be covered with grass. Now, we're going to start with the green. That was the original color. I'm going to sprinkle some at the top here. It does not particularly like to come across, so it come apart, so it is going to be a little clumpy. But if you get it from high enough, you can sort of spread it out. I say that. And then it clumps everywhere. So that's that top third or so. Trying to be same spot twice, really. Okay. Trials and tribulations of doing it, what you know is the wrong way. But I'm being demonstrative here, so we're going to do it that way. Then I'm going to take the bright yellow, doing these in the order that I uh, made them. So I've got the green on the right. Bright yellow on the top, on the top front, the one away from me, the one I'm doing now. Then I made this technical difficulties again. There, I don't know what it is with this camera. Every once in a while, it just quits filming, and uh, luckily I caught it this time right ass. So next, we're going with the mix here at the top. And same thing, just kind of sprinkling it around, shaking it on. This is by hand. This is not the way I suggest doing it. This is, in fact, the way I suggest not doing it. Okay, and then the browner yellow here at the bottom. Oddly enough, that one sprinkles easier. I don't know. Something about the amount of PVA I got in that one changed everything up. Okay, so that's done by hand. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the tap method. 
Now this does take a while because some of these fibers don't necessarily want to line up with that basket. So it'll get there in the end. But as you can see, it's going to take you a while. So I'm just going to skip ahead. We're not even going to do that anymore. I'm going to take this and do the one where you brush it around in a circle in there. A little more to that. Now you don't want to press really hard. That's going to stop it going through. You just want to sort of rock it back and forth so it catches the fibers upright and drops them on. Oh, that is probably really boring to watch. Okay. Bright yellow. Same thing. Spin it around, spin it around, spin it around. Right, there you go. So I've got those on there to at least a decent coverage. I'm gonna let those dry, toss them in front of a fan, let the paint do its thing, the paint glue mixture. Then I'm gonna come back and when you see me again, I will um, have already sealed these down. Now what I'm gonna use to seal that down is what I call the juice, which is my version of a scenic sealer. This works just like every time, every other one you've ever seen. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna spritz these down with some isopropyl so that it breaks up any surface tension. Now this already has a surfactant in it to break the surface tension. So then I'm just gonna put a few drops here and there and let it spread out in that alcohol. Then I'm gonna let that dry. So by the time you see me next, the paint will have dried and then I will apply the alcohol and the juice and uh, uh, we'll be right back and you'll be able to see that in just a moment. Now, if you're interested in the recipe for the juice, let me know. I am thinking of doing a whole episode on just my booms and the juice and my fitty fitty and all the other mixes I make to use for these so if you're interested in that let me know down below that would be awesome um, and uh, or on social media you can catch me on Facebook that type of thing and uh, so uh, I'll be right back with these all finished up and painted this is already running longer than I wanted so I'm gonna cover this tail end of this really quickly and then I'm gonna show you uh, I'll have my outro and then I'll have some footage for you at the end where you can see some of these pieces so I painted the ground brown for the ground then I covered with the flock then I hit with the uh, ceiling compound and then the the sealant to seal it down and now those are all dry and ready to go let me show you what I've got going on here again this is the first green the lighter green, yellow the mix of the two and the uh, browner green, no, browner yellow, the darker yellow that I did second. So these are the ones where I dropped it by hand at the tops of tops of all these from where you're sitting. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then the ones where I used the small strainer are the bottoms here, 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 and here. And so let me show you what those turned out like. This is the green. As you can see, it's got a little bit of grassy texture, but it definitely looks like grass when you uh, look at it. So I think that the sprinkling it by hand after all of the sealant and everything else was done actually looks better. However, mistakes were made. That's the thing. I make the problem, make the error so you don't have to. After doing that, I realized that the wires on this strainer are very, very fine. The, the gaps between them. I have two other strainers. This one's got, and I already knew that because I use these for straining sand. And this one has sort of a medium grit or gr gap. And then this one has a much larger gap to it. So what I did afterwards is I created another one and I used the mix color and I did the same thing with the whole process. It's not even quite dry yet, but I'll show you. I put down the brown. Then I used the strainer to go over it, but I used the wider one, and it goes through a lot easier. Not only does it go through easier, it also stands up more. So this has had everything done to it. The sealant's already on it, and about 95% dry. And if you look, you can see that there is a much grassier texture to that. It stands up a lot better, and it does get a better mix and a better spread. So. 
quick run through, then I'll give you my verdict. My verdicts will be after the bump. This is what I made from the hemp rope. This is the short fibers. This is what I used on the on the portions in, in front of you. That's these. These are the colors I did. I did the green, the yellow that I thought was too bright, though it actually turned out looking pretty good. The mix of the two here, and then the darker brown or brownish yellow here, which I do prefer to the brighter yellow, but they're both fine. So that's this with the hemp. This is also hemp, and these are cut longer. And these work well for hay piles and shrub bushes along fences, that sort of thing. So these are just a centimeter or more long rather than the, the two or three millimeter like these. These are also hemp. I have from a previous experiment some of the same, the lengthier kind here in a, in a uh, sizal. And the sizal comes out looking almost the same. These are two totally different plants. They have a totally different feel in your hand, but they look almost identical on the play surface. So uh, hemp works, sizal works, jute works. Um, there's a couple others that are used in the same way and they all work for it. So that's all of those. Here's the better spread. I recommend either if you want patchy grass, using hand sprinkling or the larger gapped strainer, not the tighter ones. All right, uh, if, you, if that's pretty much everything covered. Uh, if you want to take off at this time, that's fine. Just remember to find me on social media. I've got links down and below and uh, uh, there'll be some there won't be links, but there'll be information on the tail card at the end of the video if you want to hang around. Um, please like us on site and uh, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Once again, I've been your host, that guy Cross, and I am more than happy to keep bringing you this, these to you. If y'all have any ideas for thing, things that you want to see, drop me a, lot, a note in the comments down below, or catch me on Facebook, and uh, I'll see what I can do for you. Uh, I tend to work in D and D type stuff, medieval and magic. I'm not much of a uh, modern or post epoch guy, but um, if you're interested in something, in any kind of fantasy build, let me know what you'd like to see down there and I'll give it a try. All right, so here's the bump and then I'll be back to have my wrap up. So there you have it. I try to keep them simple, easy, quick, and cheap. And occasionally they turn out good. This was simple pretty straightforward. It was not easy. It was not quick. Cheap is the price of a rope. You may have that laying around. So we covered two out of the four that I go for. The other two, eh, I can get better over time. You can get better over time. I hope you've enjoyed the build. I hope it's at least sparked some creativity in you. And that's really what I'm trying to do with this. Now, my wrap up for this comes down to two sides of this. Is it worth it? And would I do it? Worth it, time-wise, if you're already sitting in front of a TV, if you're already sitting watching YouTube videos, if you've got an hour of downtime and you just don't know what to do with yourself, this is worth it. It costs less than pennies. It's tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of money for this craft. And you can cover acres in scale of ground with one single rope. But time-wise, if time's at crunch and you just want to get it on the table and get it done, buy your flock. This is only if you really want a personal look, a personal touch, or you absolutely don't have the money to do it, or if you're stuck in like COVID lockdown and you happen to have a chunk of rope laying around. So, is it worth it? Yes, because I like the outcome. No, because it is not time saving at all. So, the other side of that is, do I enjoy it, and would I do it again? Oh, absolutely. This was a fun project. And I've got hours and hours where I'm watching YouTube videos, where I'm watching TV, where I'm listening to music, where I'm listening to audiobooks, and I've got a moment. I'll just sit there and cut some rope up, and I'll be making piles and piles more of this. So, your mileage may vary on that. All right, that's all I got this time. 
Remember, like, share, and subscribe. There's links in, down below. And once again, this has been Campaign Train. I have been your host, That Guy Cross. I love you, and I will see you next time. And until then, I wish you well on your campaign. Have a great day. Only are to shape